Yo guys, it's Dr. Anime. The greatest demon lord is reborn as the typical nobody, is the subject of today's recap. We are first introduced to a character in the novel who is no longer thought of as human. He is now known to the populace as Varvados, the greatest demon ruler, but this has made him yearn for failure. Varvados thinks that if people saw him humiliatingly vanquished, they would perceive him as a normal person once more. The only issue is that he no longer has any enemies who could harm him. The demon lord comes to the conclusion that reincarnating himself is his only choice. Subsequently, we see the demon lord's rebirth as Art Meteor, together with his extremely ordinary parents who reside in an ordinary country town. He is celebrating his 10th birthday. Art says that he was fortunate to have good health, endurance, and athleticism even after his rebirth. Art's devoted parents feel that he should start thinking about his goals and the future at this age. Art shares his biggest aspiration, which is to become friends with someone who doesn't fear him. Art looks at some children he spotted outside. Art feels that since he is no longer a demon lord and is just a regular villager, the kids ought to want to make friends. He is terribly mistaken, though. For the kids simply flee from his gaze out of fear, though Art finds it difficult to understand why he didn't succeed, he is unwavering in his resolve and chooses to act rather than sit around. He tries again, this time with some girls. Art experiences anxiety that he did not experience even when facing deities. Though he gives the females credit for forcing him into a difficult situation, he remains resolute. He walks up to them promising to give them half the world in exchange for their friendship, only to discover that the girls had fled in fear. Art is shocked to learn that after having buried many heroes and destroyed gods in the past, he can no longer make kids want to be friends with him. In a neighboring woodland, Art sorts through his confusion and lets go of his frustration. Later on, Olahide, the town's mayor, promises to teach him a straightforward technique for forming friendships. Art questions whether it's a clever political plot or a potent spell, but Olahide advises him to just try being polite and kind. With a more formal and overly kind demeanor, Art makes an attempt to become friends with the same kids as before. Once more, his attempts are unsuccessful. Art then considers destroying the planet for a short while, but he stops himself because he doesn't want to repeat his previous life's mistake. He travels to discover a little girl venting her annoyance on a beast after hearing a girl cry loudly in the distance. Mayor Olahide discusses his worries for his daughter with the Art's parents when he gets home. After being teased and harassed non-stop owing to her family history, she has turned away from everyone. Art makes a point of behaving politely and with dignity, even professing to know every detail about her down to the precise number of moles on her body. One day, she always rejects Art since she thinks he's really scary. Art claims he won't give up despite all of the rejection. Later that evening, he discusses all of the tactics he has employed thus far, such as poetry, music, and bribes. While doing so, Art hears screams outside and discovers that monsters are attacking the town. When his father orders him to go home, Ola Hyde interrupts them to go for Adina, who hasn't come home. Art acknowledges that scaring her and making her flee into the mountains was his fault. In another scene, Adina is encircled by numerous trolls. When the leader asks her to shout for support from her friends, she responds that she doesn't have any and gives up saying that life is no longer enjoyable. But just before she's attacked, Edina can't help but call out for assistance. Then there's a big explosion that pushes the monsters back. When Art finally shows up, he is overjoyed to hear Edina mention his name for the first time ever. Art offers the monsters to flee, but they refuse, so he dispatches them all quickly. Edina wants to die, therefore she doesn't understand why he saved her. She claims that Art simply doesn't get how solitary and isolated her existence is, and he detests that kind of conversation. Even if they did become friends, she worries that he will eventually turn on her, just like everyone else. He promises her, though, that he has learned from his mistakes and will never betray her friend again. She accuses him of being a hater, listing all her shortcomings, but he persists in saying he actually enjoys her company. At last, she consents to be friends, and they shake hands. As the years go by, it becomes clear that the two remain good friends. One day, Irina suggests that they enroll in a magic school. Subsequently, we witness the duo checking to see if they pass the entrance exam. While Irina can easily identify her name, ours is nowhere to be found. When they eventually locate it, they discover that although he got a zero, he managed to pass. The headmaster seems to explain incoherently that all of his wrong responses were just wrong according to contemporary ideological norms. More significantly, 
Though, he declares that Art Meteor is a genius because he is descended from the legendary mage. Jack Meteor and his wife Carla, who long ago vanquished a malevolent god and preserved the tranquility of the royal city. Irina is shocked to learn that Art was unaware that both her father and his parents were well-known heroes as they make their way to class. Even though he is disappointed to learn that he is not your average nobody, he takes solace in the knowledge that Irina is at his side. When they come to class and see that every other student wants to be friends with them, Art surmises that this is just because of his well-known parents. Next, because the girl hails from a family of servants, the two defend her from a neighboring bully named Araldo. When the bully refuses to apologize, Art becomes even more enraged and challenges him to a duel. This bully is rated extremely highly for someone his age, Irina cautions. Lady Olivia, one of the demon Lord Varvados's senior generals, breaks up the argument. Ard recognizes her right away and assumes she must be quite angry with Varvados for resurrecting himself instead of carrying out his obligations. He nearly reveals his secret when he unintentionally speaks to her in a familiar manner. Olivia brushes it off and chooses to allow the combat since she wants them to demonstrate their might. Ard's only thought before the duel starts is how to complete it without Olivia realizing. According to Eraldo's buddies, Ard is in serious jeopardy because of Eraldo's immense strength. He launches an assault to start the combat, but Ard easily blocks it. Eraldo also blocks a second strike that he refers to as a Mega Flare. Ard knows what is happening now because he went through a similar stage a long time ago. He is aware that Elrado is making a huge show out of casting low-level spells and calling them insulting names. Elrado becomes enraged by this and resorts to what he refers to as a Giga Flare. Ard quickly blocks it, stating that he would like to show him what a true Giga Flare is and that using that word is offensive to the originator. Elrado is forced to give up and apologize to the girl he harassed because of the vicious attack. Olivia cuts the girl off as she is thanking her, saying that she had seen Ard use the defensive spell to shield Olrado so that his Giga Flare would not destroy him. She says that in the modern day and with age, the capacity to use the spells at once is gone. She starts to doubt him more and more, wondering how he manages to do it and why he is unaware that it is a lost ability. She says she will ultimately find out who he is, but for now she lets it stay that way. Olivia makes her students divide into groups of three later on. After inviting Ginny, the victim of bullying, Art and Arena set out to skin a B-class wolf. The other kids find it unbelievable that they have to finish such a challenging task, but Art's troop defeats the wolves with ease. Nevertheless, they were unable to skin its hide due to the strength of their blows. Ginny expresses regret about merely being a beggar, and Art offers to tutor her in order to help her gain confidence. They explain that it's because they are friends, but she still doesn't understand why they would go to the trouble. After Ginny accepts his offer, he starts trying to teach her a few things. She fails horribly, and it's evident that years of suffering have destroyed her self-confidence. She is then delighted to learn how to cast a very basic spell that Art taught her, and she uses it on a wolf. But as they go to skin it, they trip over a trap and come under attack by a minotaur. Art takes this as an opportunity to reiterate his lesson, carefully bringing a monster dangerously close to death. Art turns to face Ginny and asks her to wrap things up. Art tells Ginny she can't do it and she needs to find the strength to say goodbye to her past. He advises her to make the decision to transform her life at this very moment. She recalls how she had never encountered the difficulties before and harbors the hope that the demon lord or another figure will one day come to her aid. At last, she decides she wants to get stronger and doesn't want to flee or cry anymore. The pals celebrate one another when she vanquishes the monster. The bully reappears outside and insults Ginny and Art as well. But this time, Ginny has had enough and tells him to stop insulting Art and say anything he wants to say about her. The harasser persists, even making fun of Irina, and Ginny gives him a slap that sends him falling. As Irina steps forward to support Ginny, Art can't help but be pleased with the three of them becoming closer. His happiness is short-lived. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did please do subscribe to the channel and click on the screen for more contents like this. See you over there, Aragachuo.